Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. Today I'm doing something a little bit different, is just going to be a bit of a monologue. I know I usually do stories and stuff like that, but today I wanted to discuss this important topic, and it's the topic of rock bottom. And I think that this is such an interesting topic because you hear it said so many times that, oh, well, you just need to hit rock bottom. And then, you know, everything turns around. You just need to hit rock bottom. And so I was thinking a lot about this. I was actually thinking about this when I was at the ocean visiting my grandma and um, my son and I were in the waves and we were kind of like on a boogie board and the bottom was really rocky. And I was like, oh, it's like a rock bottom. And I was like, huh, well, what is a rock bottom really? And a rock bottom is where you hit rock at the bottom of something and you literally can't go any deeper. Like you can't go any further, you're down, you're done. And so I was thinking about that in the context that we use rock bottom with addiction. And one of the thoughts I had was, well, how come then people can have multiple rock bottoms? How come somebody can have a rock bottom and then go back into it and have a lower bottom and a lower bottom and a lower bottom. They say, oh, this is it, you know, never again. But then two months later, five months later, a year later, they're back again and they're gone lower. Um, and I feel like while disastrous things can be a catalyst for change, it's really truly a myth and a disservice to feel like internally we're waiting for that disastrous thing. I remember there was a great thing that was said to me recently, and um, it was a guy that was, he's going to be on my podcast hopefully soon. His name is Mike, and he said, you know, I really started doing benzos and alcohol until it became a problem, and then I just kept doing it for a few years just to make sure it was a problem. And I think that's kind of, we get ourselves in that mentality of like, okay, this is a problem, but we don't say, well, what could I do about this now? And we sort of say, well, there's a part of our brain that says, well, when it really becomes a problem, when something goes really wrong. The problem is that when something goes really wrong, while well, yes, it can be a catalyst for change, it's not always a catalyst for change. And human beings, we change in one of two ways. We change to either avoid pain, which is obviously a rock bottom, you're trying to avoid more of that pain, or to move towards pleasure. And I think that around this conversation around alcohol, if we could shift our thinking as a society to where we're really looking at ourselves honestly and saying, is this bringing me as much pleasure? Is the pain that I'm experiencing, even if it's just hangovers in the morning, or even if it's just feeling slightly disconnected from people because you know, I'm the designated driver, so I'm a little miserable about not being able to drink, or even if it's you know, just starting to hide a drink or two here or there, is this worth it? And I think often because we're not presented with a view of you know living alcohol free as being a positive thing that we get afraid of that and we just carry on in some of our pain until something bad or something catastrophic happens and so i just want to have this conversation and you know i'm looking at some of my notes here but rock bottom for me because people can have multiple rock bottoms so rock bottom is kind of it's not really it's not really the disaster that facilitates the change as much as, as it's a point of decision. Because if you think about it literally, the fact that people can have multiple rock bottoms, the really true only rock bottom, therefore, is death. Or maybe you could argue imprisonment could be one because you can't really drink very easily in prison. Um, or do drugs very easily in prison, but then if you get out of prison, you could have a lower rock bottom and go back to prison. So if we act on that, that, you know, really prison or death are, are the very lowest rock bottoms, most people don't reach that point, yet they do something in their life that they're no longer willing to tolerate. And the interesting thing about that is that I think as human beings, we have the capacity to look forward and anticipate what we're no longer willing to tolerate before it happens. So I had a friend, Sam, and his rock bottom was getting a DUI. And getting a DUI for him because he was a professional, he was in his job, it was something he never thought he would do. He was, by the way, hiding his drinking to a great extent. So nobody really even knew how much he was drinking or that he had any sort of problem. So getting a DUI was combined, combined with you know, the pain of getting the DUI, the expense, and crazy expensive, I think he said it cost him about $18,000 all in or something insane, of getting the DUI with 
the pain of being completely exposed that yes, he was drinking way more than he was letting on and that he was using it completely as a crutch in his life and that he was having this big problem. And so for him, that was like, okay, this can never happen again. I am never going to tolerate this again. And I know that for other people, you know, the rock bottom could be, you know, losing something serious, you know, losing a family um, because of divorce and because it just won't tolerate how much, you know, when you're talking to a human being that's intoxicated, you're not talking to the human anymore. You're talking to the alcohol. And so being married to alcohol is really tough and is really tough on a marriage, for example. And I know some people whose rock bottom was um, when their wife finally left them or their husband finally left them or they got sick of it and they said, okay, I have to do something. You know, for me, there was many pivotal moments and some of them were when my son didn't want to get on my lap because my teeth were purple and he thought I smelled bad and that was really painful for me. But, you know, in the whole scheme of things, that was really relatively mild. Another was when I spilled beer on my kids um, and that was really painful for me. It was 10 in the morning. And so that was like another reason that I did not want to be this person that I had become. And then there was just hundreds of nights where I'd wake up at three in the morning and just wonder, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And it was, it was really heartbreaking and painful for me. But the interesting thing is that something then changed in my mind where I started looking forward. I started looking and saying, if this is now, where is this going? Where is this train I'm on going? And I could see how much I was starting to need alcohol. I remember times where we'd be up, I'd be traveling for work most often in London and we'd be up really late the night before drinking and I'd get into the office and I'd be just feeling absolutely horrible. And I'd realized that if you had a beer during lunch, it would make you feel better. And I remember there are times where it just wasn't okay to have a beer during lunch, but all the grocery stores in London sell alcohol. And I remember walking into, I think it was a Sainsbury's in London and I was looking at, you know, just the little things of wine and thinking like, okay. And I, it was like 11 in the morning and I just felt so desperate that I needed to feel better. I remember looking at him and being like, okay, I could just drink this like in the alley before I went back into work. I could just, you know, stop into the bathroom and drink this and just chug it real fast. And I just had this moment of like, whoa, whoa. If I'm doing this today, if I'm making this excuse today, like where is this going? And I remember it was incredibly painful for me to, actually I bought the liquor, but I walked out of the store and I was overcome with this sense of like, this is not the train I wanna be on. This is going somewhere I don't wanna go. And I could see it and I had this incredible, very like, I'm so grateful for some of these moments of clarity of like, wow, this is where this is going. This is going somewhere that I don't want to be. And I threw that alcohol away in that moment. I didn't stop drinking probably for a year or so after that. But it was one of those moments that was like, ah. and I think we can do that if we stop waiting for the thing to happen and start really doing the work of thinking honestly and, you know, eliminating our own excuses and starting to think really, really honestly about where things are going. Where is this headed? Where is this train going? You know, I know a few things about alcohol. I know that tolerance only goes one direction. You get more tolerant to something you drink, more tolerant, more tolerant, more tolerant, more tolerant to the point where you're drinking more than you ever thought you could drink. I mean, I'm 5'8", I weigh about 150 pounds and I could put away two bottles of wine over the course of a long evening without really ever feeling truly buzzed. It was incredible how much alcohol, and I probably weighed, um, I mean, maybe even less then, but it was incredible how much alcohol I could drink and how tolerant I had become and how it wasn't doing anything for me and how all the joy had really been robbed from it. And I think we can look at things and we can say, oh my gosh, and, but that takes something. It takes, well, it takes a few things, but it takes one is realizing that a rock bottom doesn't have to happen to us. That even in the rock bottoms we hear about when something really tragic happens and then that, that person changed their life around, unless they died, that wasn't a rock bottom that externally changed them. That was an internal point of decision, an internal point of, I am not going to tolerate losing my spouse. I'm not going to tolerate another DUI. I'm not going to tolerate risking killing something. All of this stuff is not worth alcohol. 
And by the way, even if my life is miserable, it sucks, if alcohol really was this joy juice elixir of life, the key to everything, even if it sucks, it's not without it. Like even if I stop drinking and I no longer even ever feel joy again, which by the way, the exact opposite is true, neurochemically in the brain and every other way, the opposite is true. Your life gets so much more joyful when you stop drinking. But you say, no matter what, I am not going to tolerate this anymore. No matter that I don't know what it looks like on the other side of the bottle, that I don't know what life is going to be like every morning, waking up, waking up, having gone to bed sober, waking up, being sober the entire day, going to sleep sober that night. I don't know how I'm going to deal with my emotions. I don't know how I'm going to deal with the stress. I don't know how I'm going to deal with the feelings. But I do know without a shadow of a doubt that this, what just happened in my life, I am no longer willing to allow. And so rock bottom is not external. It's not something that happens to us. No matter what the circumstance, it is a point of decision. And don't get me wrong, it is not a point of decision where you say, I'm never gonna drink again. Because we've all made that decision a 100,000 times and we've all broken that promise to ourselves a 100,000 times. No, it is a point of decision where you say, I'm never going to tolerate this again and I'm going to do whatever it takes so that what just happened doesn't happen again. I'm going to do whatever it takes and I'm going to take the steps forward and continuously forgive myself and realize that it's a path, but I'm not going to allow this in my life again. And when you make that type of decision, then you aren't, you can't fail because you are just always moving forward and you're realizing that every single up, every single down, every single thing is part of the path. The crazy thing about how the world works is there's a thing called resistance. Some people think it's like satanic and evil. Some people think it's just like how one of the laws of the universe, whatever it is, it is so often true that when we start out with a good intention, we're almost immediately hit with resistance. And so often we fall off right there. But there is resistance inside of us because our brain has been ingrained to do a certain thing a certain way time after time after time and when you say okay i'm going this path now i'm not making that choice our brain actually wants to get us back in what's comfortable and so we have to make the choice over and over and over again until the point where what is now comfortable is so comfortable that it would take effort to go back to drinking for me now it is so effortless not to drink it's so joyful not to drink i don't even think about it that it would take so much effort for me to pick up a drink it would never happen on accident it would be a thing of effort and that's because i have done the work to make the decisions over and over and over again in every circumstance imaginable to just let the cards fall where they may without a drink and say okay i'm going to tolerate this because I'm not going to tolerate the things that I saw on my horizon. And I guess the main point I want to leave you with today is that this idea of rock bottom, it kind of gives this sense that we're waiting for something outside of ourselves to happen. And I want to tell you that you don't have to have a rock bottom. Just take a moment and look at the trajectory. Look at where things are going and decide for yourself today what you're not willing to tolerate anymore. And again, it doesn't have to mean deciding never to drink again. I think that's one of the worst decisions you can make. And people might argue with me on that, but for me, that's not my decision. My decision is that I'm going to be free and conscious of this, that I can drink whenever I want, but I just don't want to drink. And I'm gonna do the work of knowing what alcohol really is and reminding myself of what alcohol really is so that I don't want it anymore. Because when I say never again, I give myself this like, no matter what it is, I'm never going to, you know, have coffee again or eat sugar again or whatever. I give myself this panic. Number one, what if I fail? Number two, I'm never going to know I'm successful until I'm dead. And number three, like, it just is the rule breaker in me that wants to completely up and rebel against that. And so I wouldn't make that decision, but I would make the decision that like, there's certain things that you have decided are more important than alcohol. And you can decide now what those things are. They might be your kids, they might be your family, they might be your health. And then you can start to be really vigilant. Is alcohol taking these things from you in any way? And if it starts to, then you can start to do the work and ask the questions to get back on the right track before you ever have to hit a so-called rock bottom. Because I, again, will say it, rock bottoms, no matter what the circumstance, 
They are the point at which somebody says, I am not going to tolerate this anymore. And we can make that decision well before those really catastrophic things happen to us. So again, this is Annie Grace. This is This Naked Mind Podcast. And thank you so much and have a wonderful day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.